A. I'll call the Transportation Committee meeting of June 11th, Florida. Roll it. Turn off your phone. Rita, you're muted. Sorry, Commissioner Foster. Here. Commissioner Hovey Wright. Here. Commissioner Hughes. Here. Commissioner Laring. Here. Commissioner Mahoney. Here. Commissioner Nash. Here. Commissioner Skolnick. Here. Commissioner Snyder. Here. Commissioner Wilkins. Commissioner Wilkins. She's unmuting. Can you hear me? No. There you go. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you. Rita, did you call the roll? Yes, I did. Uh, I was just waiting I, for you to unmute. Okay, I had to catch up. No worries. I need a, a, a motion on the approval of the minutes. So moved. The part. Is there any discussion on the motion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Hovey Wright? Yes. Commissioner Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Laring? Yes. Commissioner Mahoney? Yes. Commissioner Nash? Yes. Commissioner Nash? Yes. He's frozen. Commissioner Skolnick? Yes. Commissioner Snyder? Yes. Commissioner Foster? Yes. And Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. Nine yes. We have approval, so we'll now <laughs> go into the public hearing. Mr. Coons. I think we need a motion to go into the public hearing, so I will make that motion. Second. All in favor, signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed, then the motion is carried. Mr. Coons, I guess you will take the lead. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Wilkins, for giving me the opportunity to introduce this item. <laughs> As you are aware, the Muskegon Area Transit System has operated uh, as a county department for many years, and over that time, there have not been a lot of changes to the program. Um, over the recent years, we've identified some financial stresses and um, have undertaken a comprehensive operational analysis. Uh, what we have before you here is a public comment period and a public hearing today on a service change proposal. Uh, this proposal is a, uh, it was informed by the public or by the uh, route study that we did.
Jim, your lips are moving, but I can't hear you. I can't hear. I can't either. Thing that we can bring forward to you at your uh, at your pleasure. Hey, Jim. Once we you know cut it out. The baseline service levels are feet. going to be moving forward. Uh, the proposal, as uh, put out to the public, uh, had a 15-day public comment period. All the comments received during that period were transmitted to the board, and you've received those. Uh, and then this is the public hearing element of that comment period. The proposal will uh, eliminate the routes that were in effect prior to COVID-19, and it will implement a new set of fixed route service, uh, fixed route, uh, eight buses operating on seven routes, uh, weekdays only from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Again, that's consistent with the route study recommendations. It will also uh, change the GO Bus program to operate as a Americans with Disabilities Act complementary paratransit service um, specifically, uh, which means it has the same hours and days of service as the fixed route program and operates in the same geography as the fixed routes within three quarter miles of the new route. Um, so those are the, the services change proposals that are before you. Um, again, we look forward to the opportunity to hear the comments and then work with the board to address any um, adjustments that should be made before we do anything regarding implementation. Uh, there's no action regarding implementation plan for today. Thank you, Mr. Are there any comments or questions? Jim, how does, I have a comment, um, Madam Chair. May I? Go ahead, Jack, she can hear you. Okay, uh, Jim, how does this, how does your new plan uh, differ from the route study plan? Um, is it the same as the route study plan? Or uh, I saw the, the document came through, I saw it yesterday, but um, I am wondering how it differentiates and what's the budget impact of, of the changes. So the, the proposal uh, that we are, have before you is a portion of the route change, I mean, I'm sorry, a portion of the route study implementation. Um, according to federal guidelines, when we do service reductions, we go through a public comment period, public hearing period. And so this proposal includes only the reduction elements of the route study. Um, there are some minor changes, such as the route names, um, perhaps a, a couple of turns that we've made some adjustments to. But in terms of the number of routes and the geography covered and the times of day, this is the same as what's recommended in the route study. For, I'm sorry, for the directly operated services. So this addresses the directly operated portion. It does not address the consultant's recommendations regarding um, any contracted or additional new services that we may consider. Um, regarding budgetary impact, you know, I would refer back to the numbers in the route study, but I would also stress that under COVID-19 and, and changes that we've made, some of those numbers will need to be reevaluated as we move forward. Why would COVID-19 impact the route study? Uh, that hadn't been implemented. Uh, and when COVID-19 passes, I don't see why that should affect the budget for the, the route changes on the study. The core elements of the um, route study will still be the same, but COVID-19 did a few things. Number one, it, it stopped our fare collection. So we're not collecting fares right now. Um, it did reduce some of the services that we're operating presently. We are operating at a reduced service level. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is the, the whole picture of our, of our annual budget is a little different, not necessarily that the route change numbers are different. Okay. Mr. Coons, I'm sorry. Yes. 
Yes. Um, so when I did, when I read through the study and, and all of the comments from uh, uh, our residents, uh, I, there are a lot of differences that I'm very concerned about. I, what was presented before with the three levels of service um, was a much better plan. Uh, it included weekends, it included evenings, I believe, uh, and it included the, the micro transit, which kind of filled in a lot of holes, and particularly in, my, in the district I represent. I have some grave concerns about this proposal. It does not adequately meet, meet, meet the needs of our citizens, not to get to work, not to get to the VA clinic, not to go to classes in the uh, evening classes at uh, MCC. Uh, uh, we need to find a way to better fund our transit system. And whether uh, we go to a, a, a um, millage, uh, that may be what we have to do. I think we have to not be afraid of that uh, because we, you know, the future of Muskegon depends on people being able to get to work and get to the mall and get to their doctor's appointments and, and get the college that they need uh, to advance. So I, I don't see, this feels like, going backwards to me, uh, and I, I could not support it in the present form. I think it could be tweaked and changed, and, and maybe we need to uh, shift some money around to pay uh, for the evening services or, or um, uh, some weekend, maybe not both days, but maybe just one. I don't know, but we need to, we need to do better with this, and and I, I think it's, we could tweak it to make it better, <clears throat> at least in the short run. In the long run, I think we're gonna need more funding. Willistine, I have a comment too. <coughs> Commissioner, go ahead, yes. Susie. Thank, thank you. Uh, Jim, I, I happen to agree with um, Marsha in a lot of those respects. I know that we spent a lot of time on this program and they gave us back some really good responses but i do think we need to look at it from the needs of the people that ride the system and i also think that we probably need to look at maybe a millage for that um but i i would appreciate when we get to our our work session or whatever we're going to have as we move forward to give us some options that you know you you can see that we're concerned about some different areas give us some options of increasing those areas and explain to us since we're not going to be able to go to the micro transit, would you be able to explain to us down the road before we make a move what uh, we are doing to fill in that gap in the meantime with this new proposal? Because we know we need something, we're just not exactly sure what it is, but we're afraid what we are presented here is not to fill the bill. So, thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard? Willisine, I, I have a question. Um, uh, this is going, Nick. Jim, you don't look like you're moving. Are you there? <laughs> I think I'm here. Okay, My, your, the, the image is, your image isn't moving. Um, what about the micro transit? What happened to that? Can you hear me? Oh, there you are. There's two of you there. Here says uh, Bob Lukens. I'm on with you. You're not Bob Lukens. Oh, they're Bob Lukens. Okay. Um, commissioners, I, I cannot stress enough that the proposal uh, that's before you is just the reduction of portions, and it is just regarding our directly operating services that were outlined in the route study. Um, we would. Can't hear you. You're muted. I'm sorry. Uh, commissioners, I can't stress enough that what you have before you is the uh, directly operated services portion only of the route study. That represents the segments that we would be reducing in our directly operated services. Uh, we will bring to you um, a plan for what we put into place that can include some replacement services. It can include some of the microtransit elements of the route study. 
uh, what would be difficult for us to do is put together all of the elements and bring it forward. And then if the board elected not to implement some of the cuts, we wouldn't be able to afford the new pieces. So we're doing the cuts first to show you uh, what we can do with regards to our directly operated services. And then what we would like to do is before we bring you an implementation action is to identify some of those replacement services that we may be able to put in place. Okay. Jim, I think that's a really good idea. I, I, I appreciate you explaining it to us better. Um, Mr. Coons, yes. when you say directly operated services, is that another phrase for fixed route? I, I'm not sure what you mean by that term. If, if you recall that in the route study, the consultants really had two different approaches to how we deliver transportation in Muskegon. There were the pieces, pieces that would be directly operated by county staff with county vehicles. Um, and that's the piece that is included in this um, proposal. The consultant also suggested that there may be other solutions regarding a microtransit solution where we bring in a, a technology solution with a contracted service. That may or may not be the best way forward, but, but we feel there are good um, benefits to that. Uh, but there are also things we could do to address some of the shortcomings that you're hearing in public comments, and we would like to have those discussions and bring that forward to you. Well, I thought I understood this, but I, I'm, now I'm quite confused. <laughs> uh, so what were, was presented before COVID was a three-part program, and you're presenting just one of those parts. We're presenting two, two of those parts. There were two parts that were directly operated. It was, a, it was a change to the route program, and it was a change to the GO bus program, and that is what is in this proposal. The third piece would be expending additional resources for a new form of service. And until okay. we know what the directly operated portions of service will be, we can't commit to vendors and we can't commit to you how much we can afford to spend on another solution for the gaps. So, um, under the uh, the services for the uh, handicap, you said you have to be within three quarters of a mile of a fixed route. Was that the case before? I don't recall that limitation because what happens to the people that live beyond that three quarters? Have they no transportation even though they qualify? In the current GoBus program, we're trying to do two things. We are trying to deliver an ADA service, similar to what's being proposed here. But we are also trying to deliver a countywide service um, without ADA regulation. And so what we're proposing here is to focus the GoBus on the required ADA element, and then to allow the microtransit or another service to fill in um, where that vacates. But that's not it a sure not thing. In this proposal. It is something to be developed for you. Are there any <laughs> providers for that uh, microtransit inside or outside the county? We would expect that to be a technology-based solution. There are providers that offer that. Uh, we have not yet done the request for proposals for it. Okay. Jim, could you tell me what yeah. in the process of reducing the service and eliminating fares, did we break even or is there a, are we behind? Can you tell me how that worked out? Well, with the reductions that we implemented on May 23, uh, we reduced to approximately 30% of our full service levels. Um, our expenses are probably about 70% of our pre-COVID service level. That's just a rough number. Okay, thank you. Madam Chair, may I say something? Commissioners, can I remind you, this is mostly for the public today. We will have a chance again to do this soon for questions and answers to Jim. Um, so we have another meeting coming up soon. So if we could move on to the public. 
Yes. I'd like to make a couple of comments before we move on. <coughs> Go ahead, Charles. I'm glad I heard you. Okay. I just wanted to make sure because I'm I'm having some technical difficulties today. It seems like my uh, my Zoom keeps cut out. It does out. It's not me. Um, what I'm hoping that we can do is a look at uh, the way that we did bus still back in 2010. And the reason I because we did the study, uh, there was a print um, that we um, came up with this route system for that worked for Muskegon County. And we implemented that back in that time, and it did have an expansion of time. Um, I, I'm, I'm even thinking that maybe we could look at that option with uh, without a Sunday, um, but include a Saturday. Um, but I agree with uh, Commissioner Harvey Wright that we need to have this available so that people can go to work and people are able to get home. Uh, people can get to doctor's appointments. People can get to uh, grocery stores and all the different needs that they have for those that don't have transportation. At that time, we had implemented that uh, expansion for the evening hours, and we were doing really well. We actually had a study come back. I mean, uh, Mr. Coons came back to us to let us know how we were doing, and that at that time, with that first expansion, we were doing really great. And it included mainly the inner city routes that we're kind of studying now. What we did after that, though, is we started in other expansions. And I believe we went along with maybe two or three different expansions of that. But we did not follow up with to see how these things were doing uh, one step after the other, like we did with the first one. And I think that's where we got lost at. And I, I, I was dressed happening because of that. Um, I had some uneasiness about those different expansions when they happened at the time. And I think that if we just pull back and rewind the tape and look at that, that route, and I'm hoping Commissioner, I mean, uh, our Administrator Eisenberg can go back and find that route that we had with that first original late night expansion because it was really doing really well and it was meeting the needs of this community. And that may be giving us a good view of what we need to look at and any necessary changes at that time. So um, I just wanted to add that input in there because right now I don't think I could support the changes that we're looking at at this time. I do like the fact that we're also looking at uh, the micro uh, transportation services to help out taking care of things like with your but um, our fixed route is our, our main bread and butter. I know that for sure. And um, we would go a lot fiscal we had uh, as far as the service and stuff with this community. We'll get that information for you, the board. Thanks. So uh, I have a comment, if I may. Uh, is it okay? I'm not sure who's the board chair here. I heard Commissioner Foster, Commissioner Rellestein, so I'm not sure well, who's the yes. Go right ahead. All right, I, and I agree with Commissioner Foster that this is a public hearing, uh, but I'm afraid that our director of, of uh, MATS is are gonna take some of these comments as marching orders. Uh, we did give him some direction. We hired consultants and paid over $100,000. They came up with recommendations. Uh, Mr. Coons is trying to fit those recommendations into some budget requirements uh, that the county has placed on them. The goal of this whole operation of trying to come up with a route study was driven by budget issues. And with the idea that we were gonna sh move mats into an authority, that those communities that use it would have some guide guiding over it and would pay for it instead of it being a county operation. So I guess, Mr. Coons, this is, you're not hearing directive at this point. This is a public hearing from all of these comments. Uh, this is just a hearing. You already have your marching orders uh, from that rural study that we've approved. And we've had a couple of months uh, away from this simply because of COVID-19. I'm glad we're getting back to business as normal, but you already have your 
direction to head in and I appreciate the fulfilling the obligation of this public hearing. I would, I would like to respond to that because on one hand, one commissioner is saying that you have your marching orders, but then on the other hand, he's saying he's not given any directives and you can't have it both ways. What I believe we're trying to do is come up with the best solution for this community. I know we spent a hundred thousand dollars on a on a route study, but again, those are recommendations. Those are not commandments. Those don't always fit our community. Those are things from people from the outside who do an analysis. Who a lot of commissioners said they did not like the study and the way that it came out. So this is not a marching order uh, study that we're supposed to absolutely follow. It's a study that we're supposed to analyze and see if it best fits our citizens. And right now, I believe I'm sharing and some other commissioners sharing that maybe it does not fit our, our needs in our community. So let's continue to look at this. Nobody has any marching orders. We're just discussing it. I, I, I agree. This is just a discussion. It doesn't give him direction. He's already been given direction. This is a public hearing. You just said it again. This is just a public hearing. I don't want him walking away thinking this. You can't is say he has direction, but then he don't has direction. This is a public hearing. He's not going to get direction from this public hearing. I agree. Madam, Chair, Madam Chair, can we move on with the public hearing? Is the hearing? Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard? We need to have public comment in this public hearing. Right. Right. The, the, we'll there are some that. hands up. Yeah. Yeah. There's two hands up. DJ Cantor. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I. I know we have all spent a couple of weeks with a lot of stuff unknown, but the lesson I think is that democracy serves the people. And we are, the people are not authorizing a committee of any elected officials to make decisions, spending our tax dollars, without us at the table. Right. The whole reason we are having a public hearing is because the federal grants require it. They say you cannot reduce services without running that past the people who use those services. And I, I have, I spent all morning trying to write something down that was articulate and understandable. And as you talk, I just get matters. Um, I, I, I'll just say, that we have to have real public participation. When you go to visit uh, businesses and other nonprofits, those people do not speak for the us. They do not speak for the people. Corporations are not people. So we have to have a plan. I don't care how much money you gave the consultant, you've got a whole public uh, that uses the service that needs to be included in what are the needs of the county. There's no, we are not trying to meet the needs of the commissioners because you all have cars. We are trying to meet the needs of the public that do not have cars. And those people still have lives. And you have got to make a process. Mrs. Cantor? Yes? Your time is up. Thank okay, you. please, please read my comments that I emailed. Just a moment. Donna Iverson. We have to locate them at this moment, Mrs. Cantor. Uh, but we will bring return to it as soon as we get it located. So if there's I see anyone, some hands raised. Pardon? 
I so Donna, Donna, I, think, I think she's talking about the emails that she sent to all of us. Oh, oh okay. Next hand raised is Donna. Go ahead, Donna. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I just would like to say that uh, I object to the reductions in service. Um, I agree with Marsha Javi Wright and the other people who spoke on this issue that it hurts the low income people in our community severely. These people do not have transportation. It is their only way to get to work to groceries, to their medical appointments. Um, I happen to be one of those people and um, I depend on public transportation to get to those essential services. Also, I object to kicking seniors off the go bus, um, especially during a pandemic. Um, last week, I had to go to my doctor. I got the go bus instead of having to get on your regular bus with a whole lot of people and I felt a lot safer. And I think we owe it to our community to help the people in this community who are the least fortunate. And, and um, if you have a car, you just have no idea what it's like to depend on um, to public transportation. Um, you know, I'm 74 years old. I can't walk three, four miles to my doctor. So I really urge you to rethink this. And, and if you have to do a mileage to um, provide services, which would seem just a minimum of services, you know, public transportation that exists now is really minimal. And um, I think you should preserve it. Thank you. Thank you. Kip is next, the hand raised. I see a woman named Chris with her hand raised, but she's mute. Yeah. Kip is next. If Kip, you unmute. Yeah, unmuted. There we go. Okay, Kip Smith, MacArthur Road, uh, over District Three. Um, from what I was hearing in the conversation, I guess a uh, concern came up is that it sounds like the replacement for the existing stuff is privatized. And so, are we saying that we're replacing existing routes, which is a uh, Teamster um, jobs for the county, with privatized uh, drivers? which is never good. And also when he was saying that the ADA route would be separate, are we saying separate but equal? Because separate but equal concerns me because it hasn't always been good in the past, separate but equal. Um, Muskegon just passed the Love Lives Here resolution. I would encourage the commissioners along with the rest of us to examine our own unconscious biases, to use <laughs> our voices to speak up for when we hear someone dis disparage people who rely on mats as their main form of transportation. Most decision makers have not ridden the bus. They have not discussed with the people that ride the bus. And I encourage everybody, uh, every opportunity I had to ride the bus and talk to people who ride the bus about it, what it does. What we need to remember that the buses uh, can be an attractive and everyday choice for residents uh, and that it, it encourages uh, social interaction as well. So we, we bring diversity onto the bus, which makes our county stronger. We need to expand the use of the bus, not, not move backwards and, and reduce stuff. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Smith. I, I see a lady with her hand raised. Chris. Chris, and she's off of mute. Yes. Um, one thing your name, please. My name is Chris Ponatoski. Do you need more than that? No, that's fine, Mrs. Ponatoski. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Ponatoski, my husband here, John, is next to me. And one thing that he suggested to Mr. Coons is maybe they could put fare boxes by the back doors during this pandemic time when they're having us come in. But also my other concerns are um, we are mainly bad weather bus riders and as I have brought before you several times before there is an issue where the city does not enforce sidewalks being shoveled and I would have a difficult time in the winter having to get the um, two and a half blocks from my house to Barkley to um, catch the bus and 
I don't know whether I would be covered under the ADD as, least as seasonal and be, have, be able to have the go bus in the wintertime or what, but, and, you know, not to mention this whole bunch of people I know that live in Lakeside and especially, I'm not sure what the service is over there at Sherman and Lincoln. Oh, yeah. All well, these poor people in this trailer park. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, there is Elaine Cantor. Mrs. Cantor. Hi, hi, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, great. <clears throat> Eleanor Cantor. Um, first, this public hearing was not really properly announced. Um, it was nearly impossible to locate on the county website, and it was not posted in the place that it was announced that it would be posted. Um, the Go Bus proposal is devastating to the disability community. I've been trying to figure out whether love lives here, but I haven't even seen compassion or empathy through this process. Members of the Disability Justice League have been trying to interact with the county to try to identify alternative solutions for over a year without any reciprocal communication. The justification for cutting routes was that recession times were over. Now we are beginning a new recession with a plan for decreased resources for those most likely to be impacted. The route study was absolutely bogus, yet the county is once again considering a plan to slash services without even the minimal efforts to make up for those cuts proposed by the route study. This proposal only includes cuts and none of the recommended improvements. We are not even taking the, rec taking the recommendations from the study as off base as they are. This plan represents discrimination against the most disadvantaged members of our society. This plan does not indicate that love lives here to me. Please reject this plan outright and start back at square one, working with the community, specifically bus riders, to find solutions. Thank you. Thank you. Cindy Karras. Hi, my name is Cindy Karras, and I also ride the Lake Shore Lakeside bus bus with Chris, the the one who can't walk to the bus route. Now we are a two mile stretch; it's been taken out, um, and uh, you have there is a proposal for two full time buses to go to the mall, traveling four thousand eight hundred and forty miles per month to go to and from the mall. The 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 mall the ball the must bus that went to the mall had the lowest amount of riders at nine and that was pre-covid and the late the late shore henry had 13 riders per hour and when you do the study that there the study was for only four days four hours of the late shore bus yet it was mixed in with a study of 15 hours of the other buses all the buses were going by 15 hours the late shore henry was at going by four hours and they they did the study as it was all 15 hours but it wasn't that was only four hours we have 13 people on this two, two stretch mile stretch on west sherman and and uh and shoreline there we are all cut we only go to grocery stores and 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 pharmacies that's all we go to you want to cut us out and add two full-time buses two full-time bus drivers to drive 4,845 miles a month to go to the mall i think that nine that nine nine person per hour rider to go to the mall will even be maybe even less yet you are going to drive 5,000 miles that the extra miles to pick up the um, lakeside people would be 880 per month you are cutting that out and putting 4,840 miles on a bus to go to the mall back and forth to the mall it does not go to the grocery stores it does not go to the pharmacy and Chris that Chris that this is the bus that this Chris was speaking out to also we need to go I moved here because the bus came here a year ago I moved here specifically Ms. Mrs. Karras yes your time is up. thank I'm you sorry. okay thank that's you. okay mm -hmm. there are two more Bixler in place. Bixler first. Please unmute there. Thank you. Thanks. 
Hi, I'm Tammy Dixler Smith. Um, I have concerns about the social inclusion as far as the bus um, of your people with disabilities and income brackets and things like that. You're missing out a lot of them, I think, um, especially with a bus that just goes to the mall. Um, I, I'm, I'm wondering how long ago this study was done. It, it, I'm sure it was uh, pre-COVID and pre-everything else that's going on. So we need to uh, rethink this as far as more people will need the bus because they can't afford to drive. They can't afford to drive. They won't be able to afford the insurance in Michigan here pretty soon. Um, you really need to look at that. Uh, and also, I have concerns about bus drivers losing their jobs and being replaced with privatized companies. Um, that's never good. Getting in with a privatized company who can raise rates, you can negotiate with a bus driver. You can't uh, really negotiate with these companies very well sometimes once they have you. Um, so I have concerns about that too, um, that really need to be looked at in this privatized part of this, um, and getting rid of community drivers. So I, that's all I have to say. Thank you for your comments. Sarah, please. Yes. Um, I live off the Lakeshore Henry route. My name's Sarah Place, and um, I live right off Lakeshore Drive. And with the new bus route, I won't be able to um, get the bus. Thank you for your comments. Uh, this is Pixler, and the, uh, we will take all of these under consideration. I think Miss Knight has her hand up. Jacqueline. Hello. Hello. I ride the bus occasionally with my children in these areas, but they are talking about doing the route changes, which I honestly am in agreement with everybody else, especially the, um, with the view. I don't think it's fair that they're taking into consideration. We lost her. She was moving around. Hello? Is there anyone Hello. else? I can't see anybody. I don't notice anybody. Anybody has their hands up? Okay. If, if there aren't any other uh, any others for the public, I just to add one thing that I've neglected to mention earlier. And that is uh, in, in the many very helpful uh, uh, comments from constituents in the public hearing uh, or in the, the uh, public input part, uh, there were at least four, if not more, uh, riders who suggested raising the, the fare to $2 for the regular fare and $1 for the handicapped and, and seniors. And, you know, coming from the public that uses it, who are willing to pay more for a valued service, I think we need to take take that into the picture as well. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know that it'll generate enough, probably not, but it'll it'll help. And uh, and I, I think we need to listen to those uh, helpful comments. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner. We have Tyler. Tyler has her hand up. <laughs> 
Hi, um, my name is Allison Ravel. I work for the ARC Muskegon. Um, I oversee some self-advocacy programs with people who have intellectual and developmental disabilities. I um, was hesitant to make a comment. I've looked over the proposal um, as closely as I, I can, and it did help that Mr. Coons explained that this proposal was only addressing eliminated services because I had wondered about the microtransit option, which I know several of the commissioners have brought up at this point, um, because the way that the, um, the proposal or the recommendations by the study that was done, uh, I thought the microtransit could help to fill in some of the gaps. Um, I guess all I would just like to say is that on behalf of many of the people that I work with on a daily basis, their two biggest challenges to being included in the community are transportation and housing, affordable, accessible housing for people who aren't senior citizens. Um, those are their two biggest challenges and I've gone over this um, proposal with several of them and they have talked about that it's going to make it harder for them to do things like get to their jobs um, longer ride times on the bus, all that type of stuff. And so um, I just thought I should put that out there on public comment, um, and I appreciate the opportunity to do so. Thank, Thank you, you, Mrs. Tyler. We appreciate your comments. Supervisor Hodges? No? Okay. I, I had seen that Tyler had their hand up, and I wanted to make sure you guys saw that. Thank you. Yep. Is there anything else? Madam Chair, I'll make a motion that we close the public hearing. Second. All in favor signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed? Then the motion is carried to close the hearing. Now. Okay, um, hold me on where I have that uh, information. Madam Chair, I would move that we uh, accept the informational items and place them on file. Support. All in favor signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed? Then the motion is carried. We'll move on now to public comment on an agenda item. Hearing and seeing none, we'll move on to, to items for consideration. I will make a motion to execute. A public comment. Okay. Now we'll have a look. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying yes. Wait, what are we voting on? Well, I don't think that I carried the uh, the other motion right. There is a public comment on an agenda item. Okay, we do have one. Okay. Yes. Is that... Um, Commissioner Laring or Commissioner? No, Kip, Kip has a public comment. Oh. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for finding me. Hey, the roof on the airport, it very definitely needs attention. Um, I mean, our airport is a wonderful asset and, and I do support that we, uh, that, that the engineering services for a new flat roof for the airport terminal building, it's necessary. So yes, I stand with that. Um, also, I, from the SkyWest manager today, I was advised in July we will be going to two flights a day, so we'll be back up to two flights a day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No other comments. Thank you. All right, we'll mo move on to items for consideration. And we're starting with uh, TR 200619. What is your pleasure? So move. Their support. 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 
Is there any discussion on the motion? Madam Chair, I have a uh, comment. I'm wondering if we can get an explanation of this. Uh, the public comment just said that Sky West was going back to two flights a day in January, and this defers rent payments until September. Uh, can we get a further explanation of that? Yes, Bob Lukens, Community Development Director. Um, Commissioner, I was unaware of the fact that uh, Sky West was going back to two flights a day in July. I know there was discussion about that, but um, as of today, I hadn't heard anything about that. So I'll have to check on that after this meeting. Uh, but this uh, item under consideration is to um, defer these payments for terminal rent and landing fees um, and make them payable September 30th. Um, originally, they SkyWest requested to make the defer the payments rather until December 30th of 2020. So we were able to negotiate with them um, an earlier time to September 30th for those deferred payments, and that is where we are at now. And we are asking the board for their um, permission to move forward with that. Will you have that information for us before the full board? about Sky West and when they do intend to resume service? Uh, yes, I will. They are currently doing one flight a day um, to the Muskegon County Airport. Um, there was a proposal to move that to two flights a day in July, but I'm unsure exactly where that is. Um, it, may, it may still be one flight a day because I know the load factors are quite low. Okay. Thank you. Madam Chair, this is Commissioner Mahoney with a quick comment or a quick question. This is simply a deferment of the payments. Uh, they will still pay in full as of September, am I correct? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Yeah, I would like to... Um, agree with Commissioner Mahoney. I just believe that this is a delayed payment and it will be paid in September, which I think is reasonable because of the COVID situation and the airline situation. Um, we're only talking about the months where we were pretty much shut down anyway. So I, I agree. I think this is a, a very reasonable offer and glad to see that our staff got it moved up from December to September. And to further elaborate, Commissioner, I just wanted to say that uh, September 30th is the end of our county fiscal year, so we wanted those payments in before September 30th. Right. I move that we approve uh, number 19. Is support. Is support. All in favor, signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed? Then the motion is carried. Oh. Now we'll move on to TR 200621. What is your pleasure? So move. The part. I think is we're back on 20 yet, aren't we? 20, 20, yes. We're back on 20. Oh, I'm sorry. For the, for the roof? Moved yes. authorized issuing a request for cl clarifications for architecture. It disappeared. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? This is what I said. <laughs> I'll make the motion to authorize a request for qualifications for architecture and engineering services for a new pet roof at the airport terminal with funding provided by FAA CARES Act funds. Support, Support. Marsha. Is there any discussion on the motion? I do Madam have a, Chair, uh, just a quick a comment. Discussion, real estate. I, I'd like yes. to know why didn't we get a price on a regular roof rather than a flat roof, which you almost always have trouble with? Or why don't we get a price on both of them to see which one is most cost effective? Uh, it, Bob Lukens, Community <laughs> Development Director. It is possible to do that, Commissioner, but the, um, the current layout of the roof which I'm sure you're familiar with is has skylights um, that are 
cracking and beginning to leak the seals on them. They were specially uh, designed skylights and there are no longer forms for the skylights to create the glass for it. So um, the cost to continue with the current roof would be prohibitively expensive. And um, the flat roof we believe would be a better um, way to go about uh, repairing the roof and that's why we are asking for this RFQ. It is only a request for qualifications so we will come back to the board um, with the recommendation for an architecture firm um, to take a look at the roof overall. Madam Chair, this is uh, Commissioner Mahoney. This solution would be a whole lot better than taping plastic up over the over the skylights to keep it cool in the building. Uh, that was kind of a quick solution and it was dangerous for people to do, but this will definitely solve the energy problem that we had out there. In favor, signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed? Yes. And we have some CNG vehicles to come in sales and service. So move. <coughs> Support. Is there any discussion on the motion? <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed? <coughs> then the motion is carried. Is there any old business? Do we have any new business? Public comment. I don't see any hands raised. Okay, any final board comments? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. 